In this video, I'm going to demonstrate a method to correct a correlation coefficient for range restriction in the sample. I'm going to do it in SPSS based on some syntax that I wrote uh, to execute the uh, commands in the formula. And I've based the example that I'm going to demonstrate here uh, on a paper that was published by uh, Weiberg and Sundstrom, uh, a comparison of two approaches to correction of range restriction and correlation analysis. It's a very um, accessible paper to um, learn about range restriction. I'm only going to talk about one method, which is the most conventional method. They also discuss an EM uh, expectation maximization algorithm approach, which is interesting, but I suspect limited in a lot of cases, uh, because most people's data will probably not be uh, conducive to applying that approach. And the approach that I am going to use Oh, actually, before I describe the uh, the formula, I'll actually show um, an example because these are the data that uh, this example is based on. What they did, they have real data on the correlation between the theory tests that people complete before they do their uh, competence driving tests. So you do the theory driving test, and then you do the competence uh, driving test where you actually go into the car and drive drive the vehicle and you get assessed on how many mistakes you make along the way. Now if you've ever wondered, I like myself, what is the correlation between the actual theory uh, test uh, for driving and the actual behavior uh, competence test? Well the correlation is actually quite small and we'll find out exactly how small in a minute. In this case here, the researchers knew that there would be range restriction uh, if they ever wanted to examine the issue because most countries or states do not let people to do the the driver test unless they achieve a sufficiently high score on the theory test and in this case you in Sweden you had to get an 80% uh, achievement on the theory test to have any chance of going on to the competence test in the, in the car now for a period of time in Sweden to validate the test they allowed everyone whether you passed or not to do the competence uh, test uh, whether they pass the theory test or not and this gave them the opportunity to examine range restriction in a very applied way and you can read the paper to learn more details about it but they basically cut off so everyone above here in this portion of the scatter plot these are people who actually scored high enough on the theory test to get uh, an opportunity to drive the car to demonstrate that they can do it uh, in the real world. Now, typically, all these people wouldn't even get the chance to drive the car because they just didn't get a high enough score in the theory test. But again, in Sweden, for six months, they let everyone do the test so they can get the full range of scores. Now, when uh, the researchers looked at just this portion of the sample, it looks like more people um, f did failed than passed, but a lot of these circles are actually duplicates, triplicates, uh, quadruples. There's a lot, there are actually more people on this side, even though it doesn't look like that's the case. I think it was something like uh, only 32% of the sample failed the theory test. So there's actually a lot more people here than it looks. But they ran the correlation just on this segment of the scatter plot and they got a correlation of negative 0.12 and researchers often are stuck with data that are range restricted intelligence researchers are often that stuck that way because you don't get the full standard deviation well what is the full standard deviation in these data well if we actually had everyone on the competence uh, test score then we would get a standard deviation of 6.28 but in the restricted portion of the sample it's only 3.05 so if you only look at these people here who passed the test or got 80 percent you have to get a lot higher than pass than 50 percent to actually pass the test um, the standard deviation in these data is only 3.05 uh, on the competence driving test but it's actually 6.28 in the full uh, sample, the full range. So the correlation was restricted by, uh, standard by a, uh, a small standard deviation and only got a correlation of negative 0.12. When they calculated the correlation on the total sample, it was actually negative 0.28. Now, how can we correct the, this correlation 
when you don't actually have access to the full range of the sample. I mean, that's the challenge here is we don't have access to it. This is a very unique situation that they had full access. Well, what most people do is they use a formula that uh, was originally introduced by Carl Pearson, but is actually more famous by Thorndike, uh, writing it as, as case two for explicit selection. Most people use the Thorndike formula, I would say, and there is more discussion here about the use of the formula, and this is the, the formula here. A bit of a, you don't want to have to do this by hand on any regular basis. Uh, it's not very complicated, it's just tedious to have to do it. So what I did is I wrote some syntax to actually uh, perform the calculation in SPSS. So here is what you would have to do to use the syntax. You need to input the observed correlation that you have uh, from your data set. And then you have the standard deviation for your sample. And then you have the standard deviation for the population. So you have to write these variable names exactly as they are here. R, SD underscore sample, and SD underscore population. Now, to get the standard deviation of population, usually you're going to have to get access to normative samples. So for IQ testing, for example, we know the IQ for the Wechsler scales is 15, and for Ravens, progressive matrices, it's 16. Many tests that are popular have normative type standard deviations published somewhere. And that's what you would input in this column. The syntax I wrote is really basic and descriptive here. So you can see all the sections that it uh, undergoes. It squares the R value first. Then it does the numerator portion of the formula uh, presented by uh, this paper. So it's just uh, doing this section of the formula. And then it does that section of the formula. And then it uh, divides and then it cleans things up by deleting some variables and you get to keep the uh, R correct. So when I run this, let's see what I get. It's as easy as that. And here I've got the R correct negative 0.24, which is exactly what was reported by Weiberg et al. for their application of the Thorndike formula, negative 0.24. So the correlation jumped from a pretty measly 0.12 negative to a you know a little bit larger correlation of negative 0.24, uh, the real correlation was actually negative 0.28. So it's not a perfect correction, but it is much more accurate than this correlation here. So correcting for range restriction is a valuable thing to do, especially when you feel like um, your data are seriously compromised in that respect. And ap applying Thorndike's formula. Uh, with the syntax that I put together is one way to get that done in SPSS. So I hope you enjoyed that video, and I'll catch you next time.